Hello, everyone, and a big welcome to all of our incredible movie trivia showdown patrons. I am actually not on stage. That's an optical illusion. I am, however, Mark Baby Carrots Ellis, but who I am or what I do is not important. The real star of this show is the young lady who will be announcing the match with me. She is the one, the only, you know her, you love her, showdown writer extraordinaire, Abby Freel, Abby, it is the Disney exhibition match. It's the one that we all mark on our calendars because this is probably the most fun we're gonna have all season. I'm super excited. I think these competitors are ready to kick some Disney butt and Pixar, um, but I think it's gonna be a great match. That's a very, very good point, is that we got a lot of Pixar questions in the Vitamix as well. Well, Walt Disney himself may still be thoroughly frozen, but we thawed out the finest, toughest Disney Pixar questions we could find in the hopes of giving y'all a show between Rachel, Silvestrini, and Chance Ellison. Do you have a favorite in this match? Do you have anyone that you're looking for, what their tempo is, what their cadence is? Who does Abby Friel think is going to emerge from this match as the Disney champion. Will it be Rachel Silvestrini going 2-0, and or will it be Chance the Cobra Ellison sneaking up? Well, I always love a good revenge story. Last time we played a Disney exhibition match, Rachel did TKO Chance Ellison, so hopefully he can uh, just make a comeback for sure. Well, we'll see how Rachel does as well as Chance because we're about to meet both of our competitors right now. Quick note to everyone, if you're watching this, you, I hope, are a member of the Movie Trivia Schmodown patron or you got a link from someone else. And you know what? I'm not going to prosecute. <laughs> I'm just happy to have eyeballs and eardrums. And Abby and I want to extend our best wishes to you all, your families, and thank you for your support of our here at Patreon because you're the reason why I get to headline comedy clubs like this all across the country. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm literally inside my house right now. All right, Abby, you ready to get this thing going? Are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Oh, I think I was supposed to say it's time for the Schmodown. You know, it's an exhibition match. Let's just meet our okay. competitors. <laughs> Introducing first. He's got a great record, but his record in Disney exhibition matches is 0-1. Thus. He is being called first. The name from corruption is Chance. The Cobra Ellison. And there is Chance. Some think he's my son. The DNA test results have remained inconclusive. The Chance, I see the mouse ears. Yeah. But until that break, I saw a serious, focused face. Are you taking this as seriously as you would a singles match, a teams match, an inner geekdom match? Well, Mark, look, who, who are you talking to? What, what do I do in this league? I compete. Doesn't matter what stage. Like, you, you know, it's Mark. It could be playing the biggest comedy club in the world. It could be playing a bowling alley. But you take it seriously. That's what I'm doing today. Uh, probably more bowling alleys for me recently. Abby, I know you got a lot of questions for the Cobra. What's the first one that comes to mind? Uh, well, last time we saw you kind of struggle in 70s and 80s movies. Uh, have you been studying since then? Have you been catching up on movies that you missed last time? I study everything, Abby. So, yeah, if a movie tripped me up the first time, you can bet it's not going to trip me up this time. So I'm ready to go. Let's, let's bring it out. Okay, and Chance, last question before we meet your opponent, who I'm sure you had nightmares about last night. Uh, just in case there is an update, what is your favorite all-time Disney slash Pixar film? You just have to pick one. I mean, it's the greatest of all time. Toy Story changed the world. Absolutely. All right. Toy Story it is. And his opponent with an undefeated record. Perfect 1-0 in Disney exhibition matches. She is Rachel the Switchblade Silvestrini. Hey guys. There is the Switchblade. Kind of a hardcore name for a Disney Pixar enthusiast. Why is such a violent sounding name for such a pleasant company? Well, if you think about it, a switchblade isn't always out and ready to cut people. It's just when they deserve it. Oh. <laughs> Abby, she, she makes a lot of sense. She does. That, that, that 
tracks. <laughs> Girl's gotta be able to protect herself. Yeah, that, that checks out. So, um, Rachel, uh, I have a lot on my mind right now, and I'm going to ask you in just a sec what your all-time favorite Disney movie is and if it changed since last year. But before I get to you, I know Abby had something she wanted to ask. Uh, what have you been studying? I know you kicked butt in 90s movies. Uh, we know Chance is really strong in the Pixar category. Has that been something that's scared you going into this match? Nothing about Disney scares me. Disney or Pixar, it doesn't matter. I grew up watching Disney and everything just has seep, sept into, seeped into my marrow. Wow, I can speak today. Um, <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's all fun. It's all games and it's all wonderful happiness. So um, I just am sad that Chance has to lose again today. Well, if you're going to San Francisco, put flowers in your hair. And Rachel has done both of those things recently. So, Rach, my question is, I hinted at, do you have a favorite Disney Pixar movie? And if so, is it Toy Story? It is not Toy Story. And it has not changed since it is Emperor's New Groove. Um, this movie makes me laugh more than any other movie. And I've seen it over 150 times. And Mark, you know how much I love to laugh. <laughs> I do, and uh, I know how much those laughs have bailed me out many a night at a comedy club <laughs> in the past and hopefully the future. And now the competitors are set, and they're just about ready to go. Uh, Abby, I usually do the rules. Do you want to take a stab at it because it's the exhibition match, or do you just want to ping-pong it right back to me? You know, you got it. You do it so well. I don't think I could top that. You got it. <laughs> All right, well, folks, full disclosure, I drink a lot more before exhibition matches, but I'm just as fair and balanced as ever. In round number one, eight questions from eight different corners of the Walt Disney slash Pixar companies. Each question is for the point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, competitors write down their best attempt at an answer. We give you about 15 seconds to do so. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule, who is probably currently lost somewhere in Disneyland. If you're not sure you heard a question, right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be utilized at any point throughout the three round match. Not sure, heard a question right? You want to buy yourself another 15 seconds? Use a challenge. And then you can just be your manager because <laughs> yeah, we don't have to deal with them today. Am I right, Abby? <laughs> yeah, they're on their own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Rachel, you uh, feeling good? You ready to get going? Let's do this. Chance Ellison, you ready to get going? Let's get it. All right, then it's time to get ready for the movie <laughs> trivia schmodown. You see how I did that? It's the best of both worlds, and that way I keep my job asking the first question while i recover is abby friel abby at your ready okay so in the category of 90s films your first question is what is the name of the location in which aladdin finds the magical lamp and meets the genie abby what was the first disney movie you remember experiencing um, I feel like this might make you feel kind of old, but it was the first time I went to the theaters was The Incredibles. Four, three, oh. two, one. Time's up, and uh, I actually took a date to see The Incredibles. See, so, yeah, I might, might have yeah. you by ears in a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Rachel Silvestrini, your answer. It's The Cave of Wonders. That is correct for a point. Does Chance Ellison have it? Cave of Wonders. Certainly, nice. and if you're wondering how that date went, uh, okay, actually, it went okay. Your next question <laughs> is in the category of scores and soundtracks, and it is, who is the composer for Pixar films such as Ratatouille, Inside Out, and Cars 2? Hmm. Trying to think of the first Disney movie that I would have seen in the theaters, and it probably was... The Black Cauldron, I want to uh, five. That makes Ouch. sense. <laughs> Two, two. One. Were you looking at my face and you're like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Bend down. Chance Ellison, what do you got? Michael Giacchino. That is correct. Does Rachel have it? Nope. <laughs> okay. That's okay. <laughs> so Chance, drawing first blood here, uh, hell bent on revenge, it would seem. Yes. Uh Competitors, your next category is the 2010s. Um, and your question is, what is the name of Taraji P. Henson's character in Ralph Breaks the Internet, the algorithm of BuzzTube? 
I uh, I know someone in Ralph Breaks the Internet actually. So. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Molly's yeah, mom is in it. Yeah. yeah. She called the last match with you. <laughs> she did. That's right. Three. Yeah. We couldn't afford her this year. Two. <laughs> One. Pens down. And Rachel. Yes. That is correct. His chance to have it. Yes. There yeah. you go. <laughs> both very affirmative in their answers, and they're both correct. So it is three to two. Ellison still with the lead. Your next question. Actors and actresses. Who voices the meerkat Timon in 1994's The Lion King? Okay, Abby, I have not had the chance to get your in-depth thoughts on the newer Lion King. Ooh. Did you like it? It's the same movie, just less interesting visually. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the One. review. Fans down. Yeah, and Can You Feel the Love Tonight was sung at like 2 in the afternoon. Come on. Uh, we are going to Chance Ellison first. Did you have it? Underrated actor from People vs. O.J. Simpson, Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane is incredible and a great late night guest as well as Rachel Havitt. She does. She could barely wait to say that she had the right answer. And it is still a one point ball game, Abby. It's, it's, we'll see how this goes. I'm rooting for Rachel to make a comeback. She can do it in this round. Uh, Bias. Oh, I was, I said I was rooting for uh, you. I'm challenging for a new announcer. She has you well, to win. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can challenge, but I think it's yeah. only fair that Abby might be pulling for Rachel because after all chance, you are my son. So I think it's True. fair. Okay, fair enough, fair yeah. enough. I got, yeah. I, I got bias on both sides, it's fine. Okay. Uh, your next question is in the category of 30s and 40s. Uh, and your question is, what is the first name of Dumbo's clever mouse friend? If you're an elephant, would you hang out with a mouse? I, 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 I couldn't do it just because I'd be so worried I would step on. I was gonna say the same thing. I just, I feel like you wouldn't be able to like see them, like your depth perception, or yeah, that. Like, that I think that's the term. <laughs> great minds think alike, yeah. and now we'll see if these two great minds had the correct answer, starting with Rachel. Timothy. It is in fact Timmy, and does Chance have it? I said Tim. I don't know if you can give me that. Nope. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, gonna give you that. Gonna give you ten. Right, yeah. that's, that's a really nice gift to your son, there, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly the have an announcer rooting for you too. <laughs> oh my god! All right, Timmy is acceptable, <laughs> and your next category is Pixar movies. As we all take a quick refresh, where is the fish tank? that Nemo ends up in, in Finding Nemo. That's a very open-ended sort of question. <laughs> I'm looking forward <laughs> to the answer. <laughs> Counting down, five seconds, three. And both competitors ready to go. Let's start with Chance Ellison. Where was that tank? Dennis office. It was in a dentist office. Does Rachel have it? Dentist office. Nice. If you had said doctor's office, I would have given it to you because a dentist has to go to school too. So. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're a DDM. <laughs> <laughs> DDS, actually. But yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, DM. Your next question is in the category of 70s and 80s. And your question is In the rescuers, Bernard and Bianca set out to rescue a little girl kidnapped by Madame Medusa. What is the girl's name? You know, I've seen this movie, saw it when I was a kid. I cannot tell you one thing that happens in The Rescuers. I know it's birds and I believe they talk. I think, yeah, there is a sequel too. Have you seen that one? I know it's down under. That's about <laughs> it. As, as Rachel tries to maintain her smile, even though she's crestfallen with my <laughs> lack of Rescuers knowledge. Uh, we will go to you first, Miss Silverstream. Penny. That is correct. And it, Chance, if you said pen, I'm not giving you the points. No, I didn't, I didn't say pen either. No, I didn't have a... Oh, oh okay. we're tied. All right. right. Yeah. It is a tied ball game, and the dope who doesn't know anything about talking birds is asking the last question. <laughs> Hashtag caca. Your final category <laughs> is directors. <laughs> directors. And for a point, name one of the two credited directors of the 2020 Pixar film, Soul. Just need one of the two. Don't need to show off. 
Did you see both of them. Did you I see did Soul not. Mark? I did not. No. Worth, worth the watch. I, I hear it's great. You should. Recommend. Okay. Do you think it'll make me cry? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all three people nodded. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to uh, the person who I did not cry when he was born because I didn't even know who he was. Chance? Uh, I, said, I said Pete died from Mount Clary. Is Kent Powers the other one? Uh, I like the way you answered because your official answer is Pete Doctor, but you were right on both. Uh, does Rachel have it? It's Pete Doctor. There we go. And with that, we have a heated competition like we expected. It is the happiest place on earth because we're here at the movie trivia showdown at Abbey 7 7 after round one. Penny, not the one from the rescuers, a monetary penny for your thoughts. I am not surprised at all. These are two strong competitors in the world of Disney and Pixar, and they performed exactly as I expected. They did great. They crushed it, and now we move on to round number two. This is the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. All three of those words sound pretty bold because it's just fun in games, but given the ability that is already on display from Silver Street and Ellison, I think it's quite fitting. Each competitor gets a spin at that thar wheel. Once you settle on a category, give you a, eh, give you five questions from each one. How's that sound? Five questions from each category, and those questions are each worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, thievery, tomfoolery, stealing. It's not permitted at Disneyland or Disney World, but here in round two, sure, go ahead. So if you're not sure of the answer, Ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. So, Rachel, you have the honor. You are our returning and defending champion in this particular realm. Do you want to spin first, or do you want to defer to your opponent? I'll let Chance go first. Chance going first it is. All right, so let's bring up that in Gorgeous virtual wheel and chance when you're ready. Squeeze your eyes real, real hard and dream a little dream. <laughs> How do I fly in Peter? Pe oh, no, just think happy thoughts. You don't even have to yeah, close no, your no. eyes. Yeah. I was the, like, that's not Disney. <laughs> we're, not, we're not thinking of the Corey Hay movie here. Not today. Yeah. I don't want to. All right. Stuff, it stuff, is. Stuff. It's Pixar. Okay. So do you want to keep Pixar or do you want to spin again? I will keep it. All right. He's keeping Pixar. And to administer the questions, we will go to Abby Friel for yes. chances. Round number two. Keep in mind chances. I'm sure you already know. Just reminding all of our patrons, and they're better at the rules than I am by this point, I'm sure. Rachel can steal should chance miss a question. For sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, chance, you will be answering five questions in the world of Pixar. And here we go. <laughs> Your first question is, what is the name of the toy store in Toy Story 2? Al's Toy Barn. That is correct. Um, question wow. number... Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> question number two. What is Frozone's real first name? Lucius. That is also correct. Don't even need to bring the timer out. Just... Dang. Yeah, okay. I, I kind of want to bring the timer out because we need milliseconds in the timer for this. Yes. <laughs> Number three, Mindy Kaling voices what emotion in Inside Out? Oh, the timer came out this time. It's disgust. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your penultimate question. Question number four. <laughs> Who wins the Piston Cup at the end of the first Cars film? He did not deserve to win this. Chick Hicks. Sure. That is correct. Chance, not only with the correct answer, but bringing some hot takes along with them. Yeah, yeah. The way, dude. not hot takes. That's, 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 that's the villain. I'm just saying. He's, that, boy didn't, that boy didn't know how to race. The guy won, okay? He, he won the race. Hey, yeah, you won because you cheated. Hurt the best racer. The goats, the king. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> your final question in round two um, is... What is the name of the nearsighted whale shark voiced by Kaylin Olsen in Finding Dory? The timer did make an appearance. Yeah, multiple choice. Uh, your multiple choice options are A, Bailey, B, Charlie, C, Destiny, or D, Jenny? Destiny. 
That is correct. Wow, is all I have to say, because Chance did finally show us that he was mortal in the realm of Pixar, checking a multiple choice there at the end, but no steal opportunities for the Switchblade, and now Chance has a 10-point lead, which should actually be a 9-point nine. Nine. Nine lead. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. We, we just surf with it right here. It is 16 <laughs> to 7, which is also the final score of Super Bowl three. If that, I'm told no one cares. So we're okay. going to go to the wheel. And Rachel, it is now up to you with a pretty daunting task, given what Chance just did. She's got it. <laughs> daunting. Right. It's adorable. As the dog begs to be fed again for her third dessert. Oh, no, oh, it's no. a common choice. Okay, Chance Bring Ellison, it. you have one more pressure-packed moment in round number two because you have to figure out which category to give your opponent. Well, this is, like, inherently hard because I don't think she'd, like, awful at any of these, but uh, I'll go 50s and 60s. Okay. 50s and 60s is the category not chosen by the Switchblade, but given to you. Rachel, before I ask the questions, did Chance make the right choice, do you think, or are you actually sneaky good at the 50s and the 60s? I mean, he made the wrong choice for him, but there was no right choice for him on the wheel, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, oh, I look really stupid. I love the confidence. I'll Tell your mom I, I did to. my best. All right, Rachel, five questions. You do actually have a chance to take a lead here. That could be one point if you get all these right off the bat. Your first question in the category of the 50s and 60s. Catherine Beaumont provided the voice of Alice in Alice in Wonderland. And what other young character in the 1950s? Huh. All right, let's go multiple. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, Wendy Darling, B, Cinderella, C, Aurora, or D, Lady? Wendy. Wendy is correct for a point. And Rachel on the board in round number two. Her second question. What is the name of the romantic ballad that plays while Cinderella and Prince Charming dance during the ball? So this is love. Are you kidding me? That's the name of it. It's also a Van Halen song. Yes, it is. I mean... I'm just saying, Van Halen had kids. I mean, since Cinderella, 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 Cinderella clearly stole it from Van Halen. So influential, they influenced him before they were the band. Wow. All right. Does that one kick off with, well, my baby's on the corner. She's looking so fine. Put one and one together and it blows my mind. You'd be Shut surprised. No. It would have been a great, <laughs> great start to that. I don't think I've ever seen you so shook, Mark. I, I just it, when you bring up the greatest rock band, so this is love. All right, we'll get back into it. What's the Van Halen exhibition? For two points, uh, yeah, you tell me, I will show up. For two points, <laughs> in the category of the fifties and sixties, what is the name of the Italian restaurant Tramp Takes Lady for a candlelit dinner? Tony's. That's the name of the restaurant in the video for when it's love. No, I'm kidding. Um, that is correct. Though. All right, so here's where we are, Abby. Uh, two more questions for Rachel in round number two. She gets them both right off the bat. We're tied going into round number three. Could be looking at sudden death. Too soon to prognosticate. Oh, you know, I might predict that. these. I feel like Rachel can pull out a great round two. And... All right, well, we'll see if uh, she can pull this sword out of the proverbial stone because that movie, Sword in the Stone, was released in what year? Fifty-five. That is incorrect. So for a potentially huge two-point steal, Chance Ellison, Sword in the Stone was released in what year? Fifty-nine. It was one year before the Beatles landed in America, 1963. Oh, damn, really? That late? That recent yeah. it was. So no points are awarded to either competitor, and Silver Street still finds herself trailing by four. Your final question in the category of the 50s and 60s. Shere Khan is what type of animal in the Jungle Book? Tiger. That's right. Bengal Tiger is correct, and Rachel has cut the lead to two as we 
Veer into round number three. This is the round that will determine the match. It's a two-point ball game, Abby. What are the strategies for each competitor heading into this most decisive round? Uh, I feel like the strategy would be to get them correctly. Uh, Both strategy. Yeah. See what works out. I don't, I'm not trying to get in your head too much, but maybe it might be something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Abby, giving hints as to how competitors should play round at number three. You got to look between the lines of what she said to get the full advice. Uh, Rachel, you are a defending champion, but it is Chance who finds himself with a two point lead. So, Chance, listen closely to the rules because you're going to have to make your selection first. This is round number three. Each competitor gets three questions. First question is worth two points, next one is worth three. Your final question is worth five points, unless, of course, the answer references Van Halen's song, in which case I will give you 10 points. We get those questions from our competitors because we need a series of numbers from each of you. These numbers that we need may range from 1 to 12. Like I said, three numbers from each of you. You may not pick the same numbers as your opponent. Each one corresponds to a different category of Disney Pixar goodness. So, Chance, it's on you first. Between 1 to 12, what would be your three favorite integers today? Let's say 4, 12, and 7. Okay, 4, 12, and 7. Okay. And Rachel? Let's go 5, 1, and 4. 4. All right. So Rachel, you're going to hear your questions first. They will be administered by myself. And then Chance will have his questions administered by the great Abby Friel. So category number five, Rachel, you selected for your two point question. And it is in the category of the 2000s, your question, who Provides the voice of Chicken Little. Zach Braff. The Scrub Star is correct for two points, and just yeah, yeah. like that, happens. that yeah. <laughs> it is a tied ball game. And so now Chance Ellison Abbey is going to field his two point question. He selected number four. And number four corresponds to the category of 90s films. Is that Chance. part of it? <laughs> Chance, your two-point question is, The Hunchback of Notre Dame features a gypsy named Esmeralda. Who was the actress for her speaking voice? <laughs> I watched one film preparation for this match, and this was it. It was Demi Moore. Nice. That is correct. <laughs> All right. Quite an impressive answer by Chance. And now we go back to Rachel. Rachel, you selected number one for your three-point question. Mm -hmm. And that corresponds to... The 30s and 40s. Okay. And the question. What kind of pie does Snow White make for the dwarves? An apple pie. That is incorrect. Gooseberry. Looking for a gooseberry pie. Gooseberry pie. Now look. If you're making me a pie, or maybe your mom wants to make me a pie, I would not <laughs> vote for goose. I'd actually just go chocolate, so I'll meet you halfway. But regardless, it is round three, and we're very serious here at the Schmodown because round number three eventually comes down to someone's final attempt at points, and we are at that moment for the switchblade. Rachel, you find yourself trailing by two points. You can get a three-point lead if you get your final question right because it's worth five big points. Mm-hmm. You selected number four for your five-point question. That is the category of the 70s and 80s. Okay. And your question. The Fox and the Hound was released in what year? Five, four, three, Repeat. two. All right, that is your first JT roll, I believe. We get all the release date questions. <laughs> Category is 70s, 80s. The question, the Fox and the Hound was released in what year? Nineteen seventy-eight. 
And your winner <laughs> of the Disney Exhibition Championship match, Chance, the Cobra, or the Mouse, Ellison. He's the Congratulations. Cobra today. I'm the Mouse today. <laughs> Chance Ellison, congratulations. We'll do a quick interview with both Chance and with Rachel because both of them were such good sports, Abby. I'll let you kick off the questioning to Chance. Chance, how are you feeling? You got revenge on Rachel. Oh, yeah, I feel great. I mean, it's, I'm not going to say her last one was a fluke, but it showed that was my best game. Now we'll see I'm on my best game. It was a pretty great game. And, and Rachel, I got to ask you, now that the game is over with, that round two, you spin an opponent's choice, which nobody ever hopes to spin. Chance gave you 50s and 60s. Do you have a category that, that would have been tougher for you than that? Or do you think 50s and 60s was the toughest one he could have given you? I mean, the questions in 50s and 60s were a little tougher than the ones in Pixar, um, just canonically. But I mean, it doesn't matter. It, we still had fun and it was great, but I mean, you know, the 50s and 60s happened obviously before any of us were born, um, which is <laughs> always an issue, but you know, you work through it and sometimes you just don't know the answers. So, I mean, now we're tied one and one, so. I think we have to have, have another, another one. one. Yeah. Pretty much. I'm getting battle, battle for the castle. Yeah, that's Only kind of what I was. <laughs> That's kind of where I was going with that, is that uh, I, I think that we have to have a rubber match next year, and I think that our patrons would sort of demand it. Uh, Rachel, uh, start with you and then go to Chance. Uh, well, actually, I know Rachel's answer, but Chance, would you want a rubber match against Silverstrini? Do you think you have what it does to get her in the loser circle again and go up two to one? Look, you see me. You see what I can do. I'm step on Rachel's turf. I'm still beating her. So she wants to lose on her own turf again next year bring it i'll beat her again <laughs> like the ear touching yeah <laughs> yeah it's almost like a it's almost like a, a cool badass thing instead of like straightening your jacket you just like fix your ears yeah. right when you're <laughs> right when you're talking yeah. trash um so the final question that i have for uh for both rachel and for chance is get a little more celebratory because it is disney it is an exhibition it's a big win for chance but we're all just having fun in games here so rachel if i had to ask you and then i'm going to ask chance the same thing then i might ask abby the same thing what is your favorite song in the history of Disney and all the Pixar canon? Your favorite tune that you just love when it gets inside your noggin? I mean, Be Like You from uh, The Jungle Book always gets me dancing. Like, you can't be in a bad mood when you sing that song. Uh, it's just, it's so much fun. Yeah. That's a pretty great answer. Uh, Chance, your favorite Disney tune of all time. You got a tough guy exterior. Your nickname's the Cobra, <laughs> but I know you drive around once in a while and you crank some Disney tunes. I do. I'll be, I'll, absolutely. Who doesn't? Uh, favorite tune for me, I mean, you know me. What I love, I love being grandiose, love being epic. And what song is more epic in the circle of life? From the orchestration to the Lebo vocals, it's perfect, perfect song. All right, Circle of Life and Be Like You, Abby Friel, your favorite Disney song that's featured in a movie of all time. My favorite is Prince Ali from Aladdin. So Okay, Prince Ali from Aladdin. So we have Aladdin, we have The Jungle Book, and then, of course, we He's have... Lion King. <laughs> an epic film with the Lion King. Unfortunately, you all are now wrong because there's a song called So This Is Love. That is the greatest <laughs> one. And they look, <laughs> look, if, if one if one movie had jump, I'd pick that one. But Herbie Fully <laughs> Loaded does. Just saying. That doesn't count here. Yeah. Herbie Fully Loaded does have jump. I was going to yeah. say, if I turn on like Snow White and the dwarves are singing Panama, I'm going to know something <laughs> is a I little want, tiny I want bit I want to have love in an elevator. <laughs> uh, on behalf of everyone here at the Schmo's uh, family in the movie trivia Schmo Down, I want to thank Chance and Rachel just for being such bright lights of energy and fun and competitiveness, not just today, which they certainly were, but in the canon of the movie trivia Schmo Down, I don't know that you can find two more fun personalities in front of the screen when they're competing at movie trivia or when you're just hanging out after the match and you're having a brew and you're talking about the subject like your favorite Disney movies of all time. So Rachel, Chance, congratulations on a well-played match for both of you. Chance, congrats on the win. And Rachel, I'm sure we have not seen the last of you in the category of Disney. Thank you all so much. 
So Abby, that's how it goes. I even learned a little something about Disney music today too. The match, as it turned out, you might've been pulling a little bit for Rachel and I might've been in my son's corner, but at the end of the day, we gave the kids a show. Yes, I think it was a really great match. I am so excited to see their next match up against each other because I know Rachel wants revenge for sure. Yeah, I, I think we get Nerd Chronic on the horn immediately. We already have him cutting promos for next year because that epic re rematch is going to be one for the ages. In the meantime, hopefully the world gets a little more open. We can all go back to Disney World, Disneyland, or at least certainly a movie theater to enjoy all of that great content. What I said about Chance and Rachel certainly applies to my co-host here today, Abby Friel, a true light in our world. Abby, thank you so much for all of your involvement here in the movie trivia showdown and all of the happiness and positive energy that you put out into the world. Thanks for joining me here today. And let's face it, carrying me for most of it. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I mean, it didn't need you to carry me quite as much as when we did the Bachelor episode, but still, I'm glad you were here just in case. So for yeah. Abby Friel, for all of our incredible behind the scenes crew here at Skybound and the Movie Trivia Schmodown, and Christian Harloff and Grace Hancock, thank you for being here, everyone. Thanks for being such a great supporter of the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon and keeping the lights on. And we'll see you soon at the Movie Trivia Schmodown.